Hello, in this video, I'm going to cover how to set up the prerequisites needed for a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure Resource Manager mode. We're going to start out with going over resource groups, and then we're going to populate those resource groups with virtual network and a storage account, both needed for the creation of a virtual machine. I hope you find this informative. Thanks for watching. The first object I'll set up is a resource group. Before we start, let's go over the concept of a resource group. Resource groups are part of the Azure hierarchy. The Azure hierarchy starts with a directory. Underneath that can be multiple subscriptions. Within each subscription are multiple resource groups. And within each resource group is where the actual resource, where the resources exist. Each object inherits permission from the parent with no way of blocking that inheritance. In a sense, a resource group becomes a container for your resources. Microsoft recommends that all resources in a resource group share the same life cycle. For example, if you have an application that has a web front end, server backend, and a SQL database, all these resources can exist in the same resource group. A resource can only exist in one resource group, but it can access resources in other resource groups. For example, the database, web, and backend server need to access a network to communicate. This virtual network can exist in a different resource group. Also, resources in a resource group can reside in different regions. Resource groups can be used as a scope for access control. When you hear that, you may be tempted to group all like resources in the same resource group. For example, all network in, in a network resource group, storage in a storage resource group, and servers in another server resource group. This would work, but it doesn't adhere to Microsoft's recommendation of grouping resources with similar life cycles together. The better way to secure resources is by using role-based access control to grant access to resource groups. In the example we went over earlier, you could grant a user or group the role website contributor for the website, virtual machine contributor for the backend servers, and SQL database contributor to the SQL server. This will give users only the access they need while keeping the resources with the same life cycle in one resource group. Now that that's over, let's set up the resource group. All right, let's get started. So here you can see how I have my script open using Windows PowerShell ICE. Um, if we go over to my Azure account, you can see I have nothing. So I'm starting new. Uh, you can do this if you have resource groups or other resources set up. It'll work fine. Uh, for demo though, you can see I'm starting with a blank slate. So let's go over some items here. Um, this script is intended to be walked through section by section. Not a typical script that you run at a command line like a typical PS1 file. It could be modified to run that way, uh, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to walk through this one by one or section by section. If you're new to PowerShell, there's a couple things I'll point out. First, anything with a hash mark just indicates a comment, so that won't run. Um, anything with a dollar sign indicates it's a variable. Variables are neat because we can assign a value to that variable, such as central US here to location, and then use that dollar sign location throughout the script so we don't have to retype it in. All right, so we're going to be setting up a couple things here a resource group, a virtual network, and a storage account. So we talked about resource groups already. Let's talk about the virtual network. 
A virtual network or VNet is a virtual representation of a network in Azure. So it's kind of like a physical switch you may have on premise with a couple key differences. For one thing, it's free. You can set up a virtual network in Azure at no cost. Another difference is unlike a switch you may have in your network, a VNet in Azure will automatically route different subnets. So if you assign multiple VMs and different subnets to one VNet, they will start talking to each other automatically. Now what if you don't want them to talk to each other? For example, maybe you have a DMZ network assigned to a VNet and a production network is assigned to the same VNet. You can limit their communication by setting up something called network security groups. Network security group is kind of like an access control list. Details on that are outside of the scope of this video, but just be aware that there is a way to limit that communication between subnets on a VNet. Another difference is that the VNet handles DHCP. Now, all VMs in Azure need to get their IP addresses through DHCP. You should never set a static IP like you would on a virtual machine or physical machine in your on-premise envi environment. This may be a significant difference from the what you're used to, but here's why it's important. The underlying Azure infrastructure has to communicate with the VM, and the only way it knows how to communicate is through the IP address that it gives it through DHCP. So what about static IPs? You can accomplish the same thing by setting up IP reservations. As we go through setting up a VM in the next video, we're gonna assign static IPs to those VMs so you can see how that's done. The last thing to note about v VNets, and this goes for storage accounts as well, is you don't have to set them up in advance of creating virtual machines. But if you don't set up the names, Microsoft will give it a random alphanumeric name that's pretty ugly. So it's best to set it up in advance so it meets your naming standards. All right, so let's get started. At the beginning, I've got a couple, a couple commands that I like to, uh, that I find useful. First is ls variables or list variables. If we run that, it's gonna show us all the variables I have in this environment. That's handy if you're running multiple scripts and you wanna see what variable is signed. The next one is remove variables. This will remove all var variables except for system variables. And that's handy if you're jumping from one script to the next and you just want to start with a clean slate. The next command here is get Azure locations. Now the reason I ran this is to see what locations are available per my subscription. You may have more or less or different locations available on yours. We need to have this location information to populate the location in this location variable. So you can see here location is central US. You can also see I have listed storage account types that are available. Now there's LRS, ZRS, and GRS storage. LRS is locally redundant storage, meaning it keeps it's meaning Azure keeps three copies in one data center. Standard ZRS. ZRS means zone replicated storage. Three copies in different data centers in the same zone. And GRS means geographically replicated storage. Three copies in three different zones. As you can imagine, as the copies get further and further away from each other, the price of the storage gets more expensive. Under storage type here in this variable, I've set it to standard LRS. So that's gonna be the less expensive option. The next variable I have here is the resource group name. So I've just created a name that I'll use for the resource group. The VNet name or network name. Again, I assign that. You can change that to whatever you want and the storage name. The storage account is a namespace that different types of storage can be associated with. It has to be a globally unique name 
because it's part of a URL used to access the storage. Because it's part of a URL, it has to meet a naming standard as well of 3 to 24 lowercase alphanumeric characters. A storage account can contain blob, table, queue, or file type storage. The specifics of each is a topic for another day. Today we'll be using blob storage. This type of blob storage is optimized for infrastructure as a service disks. So to get these set in my environment, I'm going to select them and hit the run selection key. And those are all set now. This next command is going to create my resource group. So we'll run that. And it's ran successfully. This next command is going to use the location resource group that I just created, VNet name, and create the virtual network. I also have in here the subnets that I want to use in this VNet. You can change those to fit your environment. This may take a few seconds to run. All right, that finished. And the last command we're going to run will create the storage account. Okay, that finished. And that should do it. That set up my environment. I'm ready to create a virtual machine. If I go into Azure and look at my resource groups, you can see there it is. And within the resource group, I have my virtual network and my storage. All right, that concludes the first part of this video. In the next part, we'll be going over setting up a basic virtual machine. Thanks for watching.